Today, I want to address you who feel very bad for something you did, for something you've done, something you regret deeply. You feel bad, you are deeply sad with yourself. And if you could come back, you would do everything differently. I want to speak to you. Yes, you who feel like this, the Word of God says in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 18, that God grants repentance to life. Pay attention. It's God who grants repentance to life. Many think in a wrong way that repentance is something that they find in the tap. When I want, I will repent. Whenever I want, I will go back. Many think that they can repent under a self-command. I will repent. First, I'm going to sin, do this and that, and then I repent. I get it right with God. Many think like this, and they ignore the fact that repentance is something God grants. It's God who grants, because repentance is the gift from God to the sincere, to those who within themselves, in their essence, would not like to have done wrong. Within themselves, they would like to have taken a different path. They betrayed, but if they could, they would never have betrayed. If they had a chance, is what I'm saying, they would never have betrayed. They killed, they robbed, they committed an atrocity, but they bring within themselves every day a great burden for what they have done. God grants repentance to these people, the sincere ones, those who do not justify their mistakes. They don't live justifying their mistakes. They don't puff up their chest and say, I did it and I would have done all over again. No. Repentance is God's gift. It's God who grants. It's the Spirit of God who convinces the person of sin. That's why sin against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. Sin against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit who convinces the person of sin. For the person to be forgiven, they need to be convinced of their sins first. They need to repent of their sins and change their behavior. But if it is the Holy Spirit who convinces the person of their sin and for them to repent and later be forgiven, how would they go through this process if they sin against the Holy Spirit, if they go against the Holy Spirit? Then they eliminate their chances for forgiveness. And I know that this topic is hard for some to hear because they say, once you sin against the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness. Listen, if you're hearing me and you have within yourself this great burden and you say, I feel a deep sadness for all that I've done and if I could go back, I would do everything differently. Not just for the sake of saying it, but sincerely, it's because there's a chance for you. It's because the Spirit of God is already giving you the gift of repentance to life. So listen, repentance is to life. Repentance is not to death, it's not to the end. It's not for one to be depressed and be carrying this burden for the rest of their lives and say, there's no way out for me. This is no repentance. Repentance is to life. In other words, it's for the person to leave death caused by sin because sin brings death to the sinner. They leave sin, in other words, they leave death caused by sin and enter life 
through the forgiveness that comes from God. That's why we have certain testimonies in the church of people who committed atrocities, people who killed. At times we cannot even publish what they've done. We cannot even show on the TV, on the internet, the things that they've done because they were horrible, graphic things, evil things. And even those who hear it may think, how can someone like this receive forgiveness? How can God forgive someone like this who was so evil? That's it. They were evil. But what is God looking for? This is what you must understand. It doesn't matter if you are a good, nice person. Maybe you say, I'm good. I'm a good person. I don't live in sin, lying. I don't live in betrayal, theft, in wrong things. I'm a good person. Maybe you are someone like this. Or maybe you are an assassin, a hired killer, a pedophile, a rapist, a drug lord. I don't know. If you have killed or hired someone to kill others, I don't know what your situation is. But I know the following that the Word of God guarantees us that He gives us the gift of forgiveness to the sincere ones, to those who once given the opportunity, they would have done everything differently. They recognize that they are sinners. They recognize that they don't deserve anything from God. Nothing. And they will only have a chance before God if it is through His mercy and not their merits. And interestingly, here is the great plot twist that the kingdom of God will be. Jesus spoke about this. He said that thieves, prostitutes precede many called righteous in the kingdom of heaven. Thieves, prostitutes, evildoers will enter the kingdom of heaven while many who are supposedly righteous will be outside. Why did Jesus speak about this great plot twist? Because the problem of those who think they are righteous is to trust in their own righteousness. They think that they are so good that by their own merits they will earn heaven. They think when they arrive in heaven, heaven will be better, <laughs> will improve. <laughs> Listen, I'm so good, when I arrive there, things will get even better. <laughs> the person is so convinced of their goodness that they think that they are doing a favor to God if they go to heaven. They think that heaven's value will increase. If heaven was a house for sale, the price will go up higher because they think they are so righteous. And in this is their greatest injustice. Their own justice is the greatest injustice because there's only one true just who is God. The rest of us we are flawed sinners. And as much as you consider yourself as a righteous person, compared to the injustices of others, maybe you see yourself as just, compared to a thief, a prostitute, an assassin, you may say, I've never done those things. You judge in yourself by others, measuring yourself by others, you may judge yourself as righteous, but you won't be judged by the sin of others. We all will be judged by the perfect justice of God. And before the perfect justice of God, our justices are rags, are gloves used to collect the bin. This is our justice. Our justices are gloves used to collect the bin. There's no 
human justice compared to God's justice. The human justice is just a mimic of the divine justice. That's why God says the many considered sinners will precede the so-called righteous in the kingdom of heaven. So it's God who gives forgiveness. What is God looking for? He's looking for sincerity, purity. And I tell you who feel like this, God is giving you the gift of repentance to life. What do you have to do? You must believe. Repenting from all you've done or have been doing up until now, abandoning your mistakes, leave your sin, believe in God's forgiveness, stop condemning yourself to think that there's no way out for you because if God is reaching out to you with his forgiveness it's because there's a way out for you. If he says go and sin no more it's because he believes that you can be a different person from now on. So believe and receive this God's mercy. Lean on this and not on your goodness. Hate your sin. Hate what you have done. Abandon that. Adopt new behaviors, contrary to the ones you took before. What you can repair and make amends, what you can do today, do it. Do what you must to repair the damage you caused. But what you cannot repair anymore, ask for forgiveness, forgive yourself, abandon the sin and look forward. Because ahead of you is this life that God gave straight after his forgiveness granted for you to enter it. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.